Well, the premise, too, as well, of the protests in terms of making sure that the court system is not politicized to the degree that Netanyahu wants is also a frustrating conceit from my perspective as well, because as we see in uh, the West Bank, the escalation of the displacement of Palestinians from their ancestral homes, the seizure of that by settlers who, you know, the right wing government of Israel is backing. There has been very little to no recourse by the court system for decades for Palestinians because they say, oh, well, you know, you need a deed. Well, I don't have a deed. I've had this in my family for years. Well, too bad. Then it's then it's this Israeli settlers home now. I mean, that is that is the system that that this democracy is presiding over. It's absolutely true. I mean, there is something incredibly worrying and alarming about the current attempt to completely um, empty uh, the judicial system from um, any real substance. But at the same time, it's, it should be mentioned that throughout the years, uh, especially after the, since 1967, but even before towards the Israeli citizens, um, the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the Supreme Court uh, gave um, little uh, protection, very little protection um, uh, to, me, to, to protect uh, their rights and actually legitimized every um, uh, uh, every step that was taken uh, by the Israeli establishment against Palestinians, the dispossession, the ethnic cleansing, mm -hmm. uh, the demolition of houses, the um, frequent, very, very frequent um, administrative detentions uh, that can you know, be renewed endlessly, and the court legitimized all that. Uh, the state nation law, the um, uh, citizenship law that actually prevents um, uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel to marry spouses from the occupied territories and live together as a family unit. And the list goes on and on. Yes. And that is the danger for me from the outside looking in of calling these pro-democracy protests, because as you say, that makes the actions before this attempt to take over the court system uh like that puts them under the the umbrella of democracy when in fact it is the exact opposite and th that's my fear really of um some of the reaction to the protests internationally i mean biden is condemning it and that he's going in a bit of a back and forth with netanyahu but the reality is, is that the United States is not going to cut its aid based on this. And even if it does, the incentive that that creates is not to stop the apartheid. It's to maintain the existing court system, which already upholds the, the apartheid. Exactly. Ex that's uh, uh, exactly right. It, it, it is very, very unfortunate that the international community headed by the United States uh, for such a long time gave Israel the green line to um, just, you know, um, deepen, continue, not just to maintaining, but deepening uh, the occupation and the apartheid uh, regime by calling it or, or presenting it as a symmetrical conflict that should be, it's not a conflict and it's certainly not symmetrical, it's a, a brutal um, violation of the Palestinians' most basic uh, rights. Um, and, you know, we are right now in Israel at a very uh, significant moment, I think, that uh, makes makes it possible or requires, I think, to hold a conversation about the most basic fabrics of our socio-political life. Societies don't often get that chance. But right now we've been given a chance to really have an open conversation, a discourse about what it is that democracy, that 
we are calling out in the streets right now. What does it mean? Is it just a procedural um, uh, democracy, just the, the, the um, envelope, the, the uh, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the construction, or do we want to say something about the substance that feels that uh, that envelope? What is the sub substance of the democracy that we are demanding now? And this conversation, sadly enough, is not being uh, is not happening, or at least not happening enough in the Israeli society yet. Yes, I mean, and I've been making this point for the past few weeks, talking about this. You, fascism for thee and not for me is unsustainable. So now it turns on uh, Israeli moderates, secular Jews within Israel, and but but cutting out the ills that that population faces insufficient. I mean, we saw this even with, and you write about this in your piece, the Balfour protests three years ago. Netanyahu getting ousted then. Well, now he's back in power. I mean, so the, that kind of shallow um, way of addressing the the deep, deep undemocratic roots in this country right now is wildly insufficient. Exactly, not just uh, from a moral uh, stand, but also uh, from from a, a, you know a strategic stand, um, because uh, what Balfour proved is that it's not enough to know what you do not want; you need to know what it is that you want and fight for that as well. Because you know what uh, what people what. Uh, brought people together in the Balfour protest was knowing that they do not want Netanyahu. So fine, they got rid of Netanyahu and we got the so-called uh, uh, government of change where um, a very strange coalition that brought together uh, merits uh, from the Zionist left and hawkish right-wingers such as uh, Bennett and, and Lieberman. And what we should keep, what should we, what we should remember is that that government actually uh, dissolved itself in order to protect the apartheid laws in the West Bank. So when we are looking at what's happening in the Israeli political sphere today, and if you listen to the Israeli discourse, you you know you almost get a sense that some unidentified object from heaven just hit the wonderful Israeli democracy and shifted it from its course. That's not what happened. Mm -hmm. It was an inevitable uh, outcome of a system that is built on notions of uh, uh, injustice and supremacy. And if we will not deal with those shortcomings today, we are bound to repeat and, and to you know to and to go back to exactly where we are standing today. Lastly, um, I mean, what's your sense of the composition of the protesters in the streets? I mean, record breaking, millions, right? But then I see on online, um, like the anyone's carrying a Palestinian flag, it gets snatched from them. So yeah. I, I, I have no sense here in the United States what if there is some like what percentage of pro-Palestinian sentiment there is in the protest. But from the outside, it seems to return to like the tenor of our conversation today, which is just it's wildly insufficient, that amount of representation in in what we're talking about right now. Absolutely. And even before we speak about the pro-Palestinians, we should ask, where are the Palestinians? Yes. Like, you don't see them. You don't see the Palestinian citizens, um, despite the fact that they are going to be the first and the most exposed communities to get hit and hurt uh, by the reforms or the, the uh, judicial uh, uh, coup that this government is promoting. So we really should ask ourselves, why is it that the Palestinian citizens do not come to these massive demonstrations? And the answer is very clear. It's because uh, except for the anti-occupation bloc that you can find in the demonstrations, but they are quite small and quite restricted, the mass the, uh, uh, demonstrations 
are very militaristic in their uh, terminology, are extremely nationalist in their practices. You all saw the masses, the seas of Israeli flags and the Declaration of Independence and uh, you can see it in the figures uh, heading that those uh, uh, this protest and uh, the speakers. Uh, I don't think that there is, there is an ex, a single ex-general left that has not spoken in those demonstrations yet. So maybe tactically, on the tactical level, it worked, uh, and uh, Netanyahu is halting the, is not cancelling anything, of course, he's just buying time. But, uh, but in the strategic, on the strategic level, we, th that type of uh, uh, protest just broadened the gap be already existing between the Jewish and the Palestinian citizens, and without, uh, narrowing or closing that gap, a true uh, struggle for a real democracy can never happen in Israel.